Hi everyone and welcome to another aerospace engineering lesson. In this video we will learn how to describe the flow of air or the properties of air. We will learn what compressible and incompressible flow means. So first imagine that we have an airfoil and we have air flowing around the airfoil. And remember that air has some velocity as we described in the previous video. So as the air approaches the wing, its properties can change. Now, do you think that its properties will change at high speeds or low speeds? I hope it was not difficult for you to guess that the properties will change at high speeds. Now, when we think about the air flowing at the wing at high speeds or low speeds, we can think about it in two ways. The first way is to think that the airfoil or the aircraft is stationary and the air is flowing at it. So can you think of a situation when this happens? This could happen when the aircraft is in the hangar and there's strong wind. And the second situation is when the airfoil is flying. So the airfoil has a speed in that direction, but the air is stationary. And when does that happen? You probably guessed that it happens when the aircraft is flying, but there is no wind. But actually, in real life, we have two of these conditions combined. Because we have both the wind and the aircraft is flying forward. So when the air comes at the airfoil, this part of the airfoil will slow down the air. And why is that? Because the airfoil is made of metal and obviously the air cannot go through here. But when the air comes around, it has to catch up on both sides of the airfoil. So here the air will speed up. We will see in one of the next videos why this happens. But when the air slows down or speeds up at high speeds, its properties will change and actually the density will change. Now, what is density? Density just means how many molecules of some substance or material you have in a unit volume. So let's say we have a cube of air, very small one, and there is some material inside the cube. So low density will mean that the molecules are located like this and high density means that in the same volume we have more molecules or they're closer to each other. So high density will look like this. And density is denoted by Greek letter rho. So if we go back to our example with an airfoil, when the air is flowing around the airfoil and changes its density, this flow will be called compressible. So for example, here we will have dense air and at this point we will have not dense air. Since it's the same air and it changed its density, then this flow will be called compressible. But when the air has low speed, when it flows around the airfoil, it doesn't change its density significantly. So if there is no significant change in the properties, so we have the same air density, then that flow would be called incompressible. So another way of thinking in order to understand compressible versus incompressible is I want you to think about an air balloon filled with water. Welcome to lecture number eight on the water balloon. If you have a balloon with water, then no matter how you stretch it, squish it, squeeze it, or do whatever, the amount of water inside the balloon stays the same and the balloon returns to its original shape. So that means the volume of water stays the same no matter what. Now remember that density is equal to mass divided by volume. So for a water balloon, we have the same volume at all times. We have the same mass because no water escaped the balloon, which means the density will always stay the same. 
What does that tell us about water? It means that water is an incompressible fluid. So its density will always stay the same or constant. Now let's write down that conclusion. And now let's think about a balloon with air. So you probably all held a balloon with air. And inside the balloon there is some volume of air with a particular mass. Now what happens if you put that balloon with air inside the fridge? Well, the temperature will drop and the balloon will decrease in its size. I'm sure you've all tried that before, or you saw it in a physics class. So what would that mean for density? Since the balloon is smaller now, this means the volume went down. The mass will stay the same because the air has not escaped the balloon. So if the numerator stays the same, but the denominator goes down, which means this whole number will become larger. Because, for example, instead of dividing 100 by 10, now you divide 100 by 0 0.1. So this was 100 divided by 10, it was 10. But after you divide 100 by 0 0.1, this means you will have 1000. So density became larger when the volume went down. So the air went from being like this to being like this. So actually the density increased, which made the air inside the balloon compressed. And that's how we have the word compressible, which means the density doesn't stay the same or it doesn't stay constant. So we came to a conclusion here that air is a compressible fluid. And this affects how we solve problems in aerospace engineering, because at high speeds, air becomes compressible. So air is a gas, and in reality, all gases are compressible. So this is it for today. By now we have defined one property of air, which relates to density. And in the next video, we will learn about another property, which is viscosity. Don't forget to click the subscribe button to never miss a lesson in aerospace engineering.